in April 2020, Singapore saw an increase of COVID-19 cases which crossed the 1,000 mark. It was a battle to sustain our healthcare system. To reduce the strain on acute hospitals whose manpower and resources were largely focused on patients with critical illness, there was a critical need in ensuring that there is capacity and capability to house recovering COVID-19 patients in the upcoming months. Having a sense of the ground situation, personnel from the Medical Operations Task Force and the Combat Service Support Task Force came together to coordinate and execute operations in order to match COVID patients to appropriate medical facilities. Depending on the severity of the COVID infection, community isolation facilities, community care facilities and community recovery facilities were set up to house patients who were recovering or had early symptoms of the virus. Since April 2020, the Singapore Armed Forces personnel from the CSSTF were deployed at Singapore Expo CCF and Changi Exhibition Centre CCF to look after COVID patients. The key to really preserving Singapore's capacity and making use of our existing resources to the maximum it can be in combating COVID-19, it really involved us being able to efficiently manage the existing patients in the system and be able to also size up the correct capacity. Not too much, not too little. Too much, we are not overwhelmed, but at the same time, we are also wasting precious medical resources, which uh, Singaporeans actually also needed at a point of time. The temporal operations is uh, a lot higher. Your entire focus is on providing primary health care to the 1,800 patients at any time. It was just routine, going through a daily 17-hour, 17, 18-hour cycle a day, making sure that every man and woman in my task force was safe, and making sure they were not infected. One of the challenges we face is basically is the, is the language barrier. We have to speak basic English slowly and with hand gestures. Sometimes even with the help of Google Translate to help us out. But we do manage to get our message through. You know, they understand us and then we understand uh, them. And we do think everything nicely so that they feel appreciated and they don't feel like a second class person whatsoever. Prior to patients being transferred to CIFs, a thorough process of screening and triaging was involved. The primary aim is to filter out patients that have COVID or are at very high risk of respiratory illness. Being able to segregate these patients from the rest of the community. The complexity comes when there is a large volume of patients and there are multiple patients that you have to do multiple procedures, investigations and analysis on and being able to prioritise these patients and assess them properly. Simultaneously, the MOTF's Anticipatory Ops Centre monitors the capacity of CIFs to ensure there is sufficient bed space for patients. We ensure that there's uh, adequate community care facilities and community recovery facilities to house the recovery COVID-positive patients. We have to liaise with the various agencies to make sure that the facilities are set up. And these facilities could be from a variety of places, could be schools, could be SAF camps. Given the complexity of managing the COVID patients within the CIFs and CRFs, command and control systems for the efficient monitoring of movements of patients were used. We actually developed the C2 systems to allow them to have a common integrated picture among the interagency's task force for them to do management of the migrant workers during this time so that we are able to do uh, movement of the foreign workers from dormitories across to the medical and care facilities. There are various data sources that we tap from, from the different agencies, including situation reports, as well as mobile applications that we actually deploy on the ground. To better manage the inflow and outflow of patients, the SAF created a systematic process for migrant workers modelled after the airport terminal system structure. So in the beginning, the migrant workers or the residents go to work, they first assemble at the main tentage, which is the departure hall. They line up according to their companies and transport arrangements. Our staff will go to them, we check their access codes, which are the green codes on their mobile devices. This is to show that they are cleared to go to work. And we scan them, make sure that they are not part of the quarantine orders. So it's like a check-in process. Once they receive the boarding pass, they move out to the turnstile area. It's near the exit of the dormitory. This is like an immigration clearance to clear the passports. 
This is our transit area where we wait to board the vehicle. And as they enter the canteen, there will be a staff there to collect their boarding pass. And that's where they coordinate with their staff at the driveway entrance, where they coordinate the vehicles outside. For example, this company A, your vehicle is here, please go out. And then they board. And out they go. Concurrently, Task Force commanders and operation planners keep their eye on COVID patient movements using the Migrant Worker Conveyance Monitoring app. This app helps to streamline the movement process for many operations. This app helps to track the movement of the migrant worker from their um, hostel to maybe hospital or to some of the other facilities for them to do their recovery. All this information will be used to inform the key stakeholders on the movement and helps them to do the next day monitoring in terms of allocation of resources like maybe the buses, the food and maybe looking out where are the potential choke points in terms of the facility movement itself. Given the long hours of operations at the facilities, a means of improving the health and safety of healthcare personnel as well as the efficiency of operations was needed. Here were some of the technological enablers and solutions. We quickly form an integrated team of engineers and designers to design and develop uh, face shields for our frontline officers. We started off by purchasing commercially available face shields so that we could quickly test it out with DST officers and operational servicemen with the intent to identify enhancements for a better design that was more comfortable and also more effective. Face Protect Plus has an adjustable frame so that it could fit most face uh, shapes and sizes, including bespectacled wearers. It's also suitable for indoor and outdoor use. On top of that, it's also lightweight and comfortable even when worn for very long hours. There are six community recovery facilities requiring, um, in the traditional way, it actually required six medical teams uh, on site at any given day. So there was a need to firstly optimize the manpower, medical manpower that we can deploy to actually give the safest way in which we can deliver medical care to the migrant workers. We tried to make it as simple as we can for the migrant workers. We also included some pictures in the um, telemedicine platform so that they can easily identify what kind of symptoms they are reporting to the medical centre for. We managed to conduct almost 450 medical consultations through that without any negative feedback. This telemedicine platform enabled a very safe delivery of our medical consultations. We are dealing with how to enhance the lifespan of the surgical masks because that is an important part of the defense against COVID-19. Because UV is a light. To disinfect, the light must get to every part of the mask. We have to design it such that the intensity is strong enough that the light will get through but will not destroy the mask. And that needs a fair amount of calculation and estimation. Although it was designed for surgical mask, it can be used to disinfect any kind of uh, material where you actually have uh, surface contamination. Personal items like phone, watches, even a face visor. Increasingly, uh, the facilities, the community care facilities, community isolation facilities are being built up. That's where we conceptualize the whole container to handle different assorted sizes of personal belongings. So the size of the container is a 20-foot ISO shipping container. All these serogenous solutions can protect them from cross-contamination. In the midst of daily operations, part of the challenge was to keep pressing on despite setbacks, to give one's best no matter how hard the circumstance. We had a patient, his whole family had been infected with COVID. His dad was in ICU in NCID. On that day, he told us that his dad wasn't doing that well and he had to make the decision to take his dad off life support. Having gone through a similar situation as him where my dad passed away and I wasn't there, I could feel his anguish. So we tried to soften the, that, uh, that blow as much as possible. And it was just me and him in a private room. It was very uh, heart-wrenching to, to see him isolated from his family, but still trying to fulfill his duties as uh, the eldest son. Yeah, that, that, that will live with me for a very long time. It gave me that additional reason why I was doing this. This by far is the defining moment of my career. It's current operations, 
it's a national crisis and it brought it brought just just brought to bear the reason why I signed on as a, as an officer in the Singapore Armed Forces. Somebody asked me uh, about public service values uh, one time: integrity, service excellence. Without regard for one's own safety, the mission comes first. At that moment, there was public service values in action. An effective strategy in combating COVID-19 actually requires the healthcare system to be very efficient. We need to make sure every COVID patient receives healthcare in a very prompt manner and recover from COVID-19. The CEC is an exhibition centre and you have to transform the entire place from an exhibition centre into a dormitory. Uh, that's no mean feat. It started off putting in all the beds, bed frames, getting all the lockers, cleaning equipments, packing welcome packs for every one of them. Subsequently, we work with the housekeeping to ensure that the place is clean all the time. We actually have a patient experience journey to ensure that we give the best service that we can for them. All in all is to ensure that we fulfill the intent that our patients have a good road to recovery as well.